everybody. Welcome back. Welcome back. So glad you're here. Uh, I got to do the legal stuff first here. So let me just tell you that the Minds of Markets podcast is an exploration and deep dive into the minds of some of the best traders and investors in the market. Our goal is to help you, the listener, learn from some of the best out there to improve your knowledge and skill set as a trader or an investor. The Minds of Markets podcast should be used for information and entertainment purposes only. And the opinions expressed in this podcast, well, there are opinions only. None of the information contained in the podcast constitutes a recommendation that any particular security portfolio of securities, transaction, or investment strategy is suitable for any specific person. Trading is risky and past performance is not a guarantee of future results. All right, so now that we got that out of the way, uh, we are onward and upward. And today, guys, boy, this is gonna be a treat. I've got this gentleman here, Michael Patton, who is the lead educator and coach at Funder Trading. That's Funder with an F up front, Funder Trading. Um, Mike has a completely different background than myself and anybody that we have talked to here. Mike started his career actually in social services before he decided to move to the dark side and get into trading. Um, and the biggest issue that Mike had back then was, you know, what a lot of people today still have. They either don't want to use their own capital or they can't get access to enough capital to trade, which is what led Mike into the world of what's called prop trading, proprietary trading. And I'll let Mike explain what that is here in a moment, but you know, not everybody picks this up right away. And in fact, most people don't. And after a series of struggles, Mike started to see some success in the trading world, eventually pooled his capital along with some other traders to create a larger pool of capital for them all to trade. Uh, and because of these issues and the experience that Mike had kind of growing his business here um, and the experience that he had with prop trading firms in the past, that led him to help found Funder, again, with an F, Funder Trading, his own prop trading firm designed to fix a lot of these problems that legacy prop trading firms have. So, Mike, I don't know yeah. if that was on target, good, bad, and different, but uh, it was great. Let's it was hear great. it, man. Let's hear it from the horse's mouth. How did you get into <laughs> this thing? How did you uh, how did you get into this business? Well, also, first, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure always uh, getting to speak with you, Scott, and then also to be on the podcast. I'm really excited that you guys are doing this. Um, so yeah, um, man, how to get into this business? Well, I'll freely admit, I never thought I'd be doing anything like this um, ever ever in my life. Like it wasn't even remotely in my mind. I didn't even know what trading was. Um, I remember as a funny story. So like the first time someone mentioned the word proprietary trading firm, it was my first job. I was working with an introducing broker for Aleron trading, which doesn't even exist anymore. Um, I remember going down there. It was the first time I've ever been fingerprinted in my life. <laughs> and I had like the actual fingerprints for the FBI. And I was, it really made me nervous. When they right. did it took, like, it took a while because we had to go through a bunch of them, you know, for the trading floor and right. SEC and stuff. It took takes a while to get that ink off. And he kept getting it wrong. <laughs> he was like, Oh, that won't work. I'm like, <laughs> he was like, Oh, that won't work. I was like, Come on, man. So um I was just nervous. It's like, man, I'm like on the government radar now. <laughs> it's like what's gonna happen to me. Yep. But, but but um so uh after I got the job, which I'll go over how I got it in a second, but I was at I was sitting next to one of my senior guys. His name was Brian. Brian was like, hey, you know, I used to work for a prop firm. I'm like, what's a prop firm? He said, oh, this is where you trade like for other people. And I was visualizing, Scott, not even kidding. I was thinking a bunch of guys standing in a room looking at a screen on the wall. <laughs> And yelling and screaming at each other like they're on the kind of, kind of like their own trading pit. <laughs> right, right. That's what I thought it was. <laughs> he was like, "No, you idiot!" It's like they actually <laughs> run computers. It's like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> but yeah, that's. That, I mean, I had no clue how how it all worked. But uh, basically, uh, this long story short, just a quick background. So I was born and raised in Philadelphia. 
um, grew up thinking that I was going to be a mechanical engineer. Like every time my granddad would say, what do you want to be when you grow up? Mechanical engineer. I always would say that. And then um, I went to Drexel University. And as soon as I got there, within about two years, I realized, yeah, I don't want to be an engineer at all. It just was too boring. I, I have to admit, like, I just didn't like the work. It didn't make me interested um and that was a huge shock so i switched over to sociology uh, of all things but i actually enjoyed that um went to school in michigan a small school called andrews university which is in uh Berrien springs michigan a little town no one's ever heard of but um it was a great experience and um while i was there i remember this this guy his name was uh i think his name was ken he always talked about stocks and this is in the 90s, you know, this is like the mid to late 90s when I was in school. And he would just talk about stocks, this and stocks that. And we all knew stocks were going up. Like, oh, if you bought Yahoo, look how rich you would yeah. be if you did that. <laughs> yeah, right. So I was just really excited about that stuff. And um, I didn't think of it that way. I just still thought, you know, I'm going to get out of school, get into social services. And I remember there's this one teacher, I forgot his name. He was a Russian guy. I remember he said, he told me up front, he said, dude, you're never going to want to do what you think you're doing. He said, you like it as a intellectual thing. Like you like studying it. You like studying about history and stuff like that. He said, but you don't want to do this as a job. And I said, why? He said, because you're not going to make enough money. Like, I don't care. He said, yeah, you will. Mm. <laughs> so he read me well. He read me very well on that. <laughs> so, so I remember that rang in my head for a while. So when I got into social services, yeah, it doesn't pay well at all. A lot of stress. And um I don't know. Like I was just like at my wits end, really depressed about it. And then one day I got a phone call from a guy named Danny and Danny just cold called me out of the blue. I'm at my apartment. I just moved to Chicago, uh, which was a big dream for me, by the way. I love, um, I, even though I don't live in Chicago anymore, I always love the people there. I always had a good time, but, um, guy calls me out of the blue and he says, Hey, are you happy with what you're doing? And I'm like, not really. <laughs> it's like, Funny like, that you ask. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't know. Where, he's like, well, I saw your resume on Career Builder. I'm like, yeah. He's like, are you looking for anything else? I'm like, yeah, actually, I am. So he takes me down. And what it turns out it was, it was a um, a company. You probably heard of Primerica. Uh, it's like an, yeah. So they, they, they took me down there and it was a presentation. And everything was interesting. And, and I was kind of listening. But when they started talking about the markets, like investing into the market, I'm like, yeah. That's a good idea. And I don't know why I forgot, but I just came, it came back to me all of a sudden. I was like, yeah, I really want to do that. So I actually got into insurance because I was interested in the markets, but insurance didn't work out. And eventually I was just really getting really depressed. I was still in social services. And um, one day someone asked me, said, what do you really want to do? And I said, you know, I really want to trade. I said, I've been trying it. I was dabbling in Forex at the time. And I was like, man, that's what I want to do. And they said, well, why don't you go for it? I'm like, well, where do I start? I said, I don't oh, know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? like, I, said, I don't know anybody, nothing. It's like I'm completely at zero. So um, the long story short, I just got onto the classifieds. I was looking through the classifieds in Chicago, and I saw this ad that said, hey, commodities brokers want it. Make good money. Sign up. Call now. So I, I went down there, and um, it was real. It was a real place. Um and, you know, they liked me. They said, hey, you know, sounds like you really want to do this. I'm like, yeah, I do. And that was it. So I got signed up. I think I was 26, 27, something like that. Again, that's so, so that's another story of yeah. how back in the day, and I don't think you're quite as old as I am, but back Not in yet. the day. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's how you got into this business, right? right, right. If, if you knew someone or you saw an ad like you did and you went down and said, okay, you start right now. It's not like that anymore, obviously, but it's not. that's how you got you, in. But you're right, because I went through, um, after that job, the second job I got was a guy I was working there. His name was Ron. Ron was working at the same place. He was my, just like, he'd probably been there like six, eight months before me. But he had, a, I think he had a background in the business a little bit more than me. And I remember he left. And he went to his other firm, and I remember he calls me, he's like, dude, you got to come over here, man. I'm making good money. You got to come over here so much better. So I'm like, yeah, I'm thinking about leaving. So I left the first place, right, uh, which was great. I still, I learned tons there. First trades I ever did. Um, 
Oh, that, that's another story, but it, they were up and down, like they're all over the place. Um, I and, know and, and were, was that in Forex also, or was that in the equity? No, that was commodities. That was futures, okay. uh, mostly futures options on gotcha. energies, gasoline, oil, stuff like that. Um, so the next firm, I I, I I I told Ron, I was like, hey, can you let the manager know, like, you know, that I would like to interview? Just like you said, like he just, so, someone knows someone else. Yeah. So he told me, yeah, I told the guy, he said, you can stop by any time. So I come by one day. Um, he said, no, come by at this time. He gave me a time. I come by. I'm downstairs at the Merc. And the guy, like the security guy, is like, yeah, I don't know who you're talking about. I was like, no, I have a friend. His name is Ron. He works at this company. He said, he, I'm supposed to see this guy named Tom. I gave him the name, everything. He said, uh, you know, you're not on the list. I'm like, no, I swear. Like, he, he must have forgot. So the guy finally calls up and Tom answers. He said, oh, yeah, send them up. But when I got up there later on, Tom told me he had no idea who I was. <laughs> He didn't even know I was supposed to be there. He just Come interviewed on. me on the fly and he just gave me a job just like that. And he said the same thing. He said, dude, I wouldn't even have took you. He said, you just kept, you kept bugging me. He said, you there you go. Me. Yeah. So Chicago. Yeah. That's, that's definitely the way it works. So it was fantastic. Um, actually, so, so um, how did that lead to, so, you know, you, you get this job and yep. you're trading someone else's money, right? Yes. Or you're not brokering, you're actually trading, but you're trading their money. Correct. So it was both. I, I had the, so it wasn't like I was just taking the orders. Your job was sales trader. So I would have to go and talk to a guy and say, hey, I got this idea, send me some money. Then I would have to actually make the trades too. Okay. So it was fully managed by the individual of, you know, so sales trading, I guess is the correct term. And I remember, because um, I, I was confused about that, too. I was like, so am I a trader? Am I a broker? What I? <laughs> and they're like, well, yeah, you're a sales trader. And that's what I ended up doing for a while. Um, it was only to the very, very end that I started to get more into, like, passively doing it, where I would just get people enrolled and they would trade their own stuff. But for the most part, it was uh, you come up with an idea. And um, at some point, I just realized after a while, I didn't know what I was doing well enough to do it. So that second firm, that's why I went there because I'm like, well, yeah, yeah I was like, yeah, they got these traders here. They know what they're doing. They'll just give you trades to do. I'm like, that sounds great. <laughs> and it did. It worked out really well. Um, learned a lot there. Um, but yeah, it was uh, one of the funny things that happened there. The second job was um, I remember like you have the equity run at the end of the day um, and everyone has like their sheet. They used to print out. I mean, this is, yeah, this is old. School. Sheets. <laughs> Now, yeah. now, now you're dating yourself. Yeah, I know. Now you're dating yourself. <laughs> and, and for those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, there, there were no handheld computers or anything. We traded off of sheets. Literally, we had yep. theoretical values and we had yep. our positions on sheets. And yes, sheets. Yep. <laughs> yeah, and they, they would have the, the printouts um, at the end of the day on these green and white paper with the perforated. Uh, yeah, it was just like old. And... I remember everybody would grab their sheets and then there would just be this massive stack left over after everyone else grabbed their sheets. I'm like, well, whose stack is that? So eventually I looked and um, I saw the trades they were doing. They're just massive trades, like just page after page after page. And I was like, man, whose account is this? And finally I realized it was the owner, one of the owners, it was his client. And um, I asked him, I said, well, who is this guy? He says, Richard Dennis. And Richard Dennis, guys, in case anyone doesn't know, he was a famous, very famous futures trader in the 70s and 80s, a massive trader. And um, I was just in shock. I was like, Richard Dennis is your client? He's like, yeah, he trained me. It's like, oh, wow, that's crazy. And uh, I remember one day, Richard actually called in and I answered the phone. He's, I was like, yeah, he's like, is Jack there? It's like, no, Jack's not there. He said, well, who's this? I said, I'm Mike. I'm one of the new guys here. He said, okay, I'm Richard, Richard Dennis. I'm like, yeah, I'm totally in shock speech. I'm like, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, how can I help you? He's like, yeah, how's my position in this door? I'm like, uh, yeah, it looks like it's good. Okay, thanks, kid. <laughs> <Just> like, <so. laughs> and that was it. My my entire history of Richard Desmond was worth it. I was just like, man, I talked to the man himself. <laughs> 
for five seconds. <laughs> so how did you get from, you know, the sales trading side of thing okay. to trading for your own account, you know, and, okay. and, and that transformation into prop trading? Kind of explain what, what you sure. know, the point of prop trading is, why someone should do it, and, and you know, what got you into it, because that's definitely different from what it's you totally are different. Right. So the issue I was having was very simple uh, money. It just came down to it. Like money. Uh, when I got into this, I mean, like I'm not from I'm, I'm definitely not from a family that had money. Like we we were pretty, pretty normal. This is put it that way. So um, when I got into this, I was thinking at first, like I'll take, you know, you see these books. They're like, oh, you can make all this money trading Forex, whatever. I'm like, OK, so I'll take a little bit of money. But then I realized quickly that's not going to happen. <laughs> And then uh, when I got to the the sales trader side, it was cool and all, but you don't get any, like you win a trade, you make the same amount of money if you win or lose because it's all commission. That's it. Right. Like there's no benefit from winning. Yeah, uh, that would that, that reminds me of some of the brokers on the floor. You know, yeah. what price is that? And they would say 50 cents a contract. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> right, right. So I um I mean yeah you keep people around but it just wasn't worth it I mean the the you couldn't scale it like you would have to have so much money to make any money and I just realized after a while like it wasn't going to happen you know and I was like even if it did people would probably blow out if they're trading that much you know so I'm like you know what I need to do something else so but fortunately what ended up happening is as I was thinking about like maybe I should try to you know, get into some sort of program where I work with an actual trader, like at a fund and maybe just be their back end. And then maybe eventually I get into the front end. Um, that's when 2008 hit <laughs> and I lost my job. <laughs> so just, just when I is everything, <laughs> just at the point where I said, it's looking like it's going somewhere. I'm learning something. And I had learned a strategy at the time that one of the guys I worked with, he was a spread trader. He would trade a uh, agriculture spreads and futures and he was making a lot of money and i, I was thinking like i kind of get it and i'm like maybe i could just piggyback on what he's doing because the margins were really low and if i just put a little money aside maybe i could build up but then just at that point when things start taking off i lost my job and um i i, I, I was out of the industry for like 18 months and in that time i was just doing a lot of practice i trade a little bit here and there i wasn't trading futures i didn't have the money uh, but I did still dabble in Forex uh, for a while, back and forth. But um, eventually, I uh, got a job working for uh, uh, Trading Advantage at the time. Um, and that was where I could actually make enough money, where I could put some money aside. So I started trading futures a little bit. And after a while, it was going, it was going okay. It wasn't like I was making enough to, to survive all by myself on that. But I was just starting to build up. And that's where I just had that that eureka moment, like I need to get into something where they're just going to give me money up front. And one of the guys I worked with, um, uh, he was a former proprietary trader. He said, why don't you just get with the prop firm? I'm like, well, how? Like, How do you get in? I was like, I've, I've looked at these things. And they have all these applications yeah. and everything, but I'm like, I don't know anybody. He said, well, I know some people. He said, look, he said, you really want to do it? I said, yeah. He said, what do you want to trade? I said, well, whatever. I don't care. Like this, <laughs> you know, as long as they're willing to give me some money and give me a chance. Yeah. So he got me set up with um, Great Point Capital. He's actually the one that got me in. And um, I applied there. They had a training program, which was not so much training. It was more like just give you a shot. But um, it was worth it. I got in there, got in the door. It starts you off with two thousand dollars in buying power, so you can't do anything really. But it's just your proving capital. But after a while, it just goes up quickly, so it usually would double. Um, so eventually, there I got up to the half a million. Um, then I moved over to Global Prime. Global Prime started off at a hundred thousand, but the only thing bad about Global Prime, which is why I stayed with Great Point Capital at the same time, was Global Prime. You had to trade a hundred shares, and that's it. You couldn't trade any increments, smaller or less. It was always a hundred, a hundred, a hundred. Which would make sense when you have like a ton of money, like you would have to have tens of millions, in my opinion, to really yeah. do that effectively. But um, you know, they're in the hundreds of thousands, so I'm like, yeah, this is starting to get pretty hard to do because you know you try to trade Amazon or 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 Tesla, and it's like you're trying to stay within these risk parameters that you don't. Yeah, and your margin's blown away right away. Exactly right. So it's like, all right, I'm done. <laughs> so 
So I eventually had to quit with them, um, you know, and but I stayed with Great Point Capital. And as of right now, I still have an account with them um, that I trade with, but um, it's not, I don't work for them anymore. It's so too- when you started with them and you're yep. trading their capital, so- Only theirs, yeah. So, so this 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 is for those of you that don't know. This is how the prop or proprietary world works. Right. You get a company that's got money, right. and they want someone to trade that money, and then there's a split in profits. But yeah. the company, the funding company, takes all the losses. Yes. So right. when you started, mm-hmm. what was the split you got? What what, what was the? Well, this was weird because, oh. yeah, because when it started, it was like seventy thirty. Um, 70, you never, for, 70 for you, 30 okay. for them. But here's the here's the catch. This is really what the problem was. Um, for one thing, most of the proprietary trading firms had moved on from the open door policy. Now they're just saying, like, you've got to come from a certain pedigree. Either you've been doing this for a while and you've got a huge track record already. Like you're walking in 10 years experience. You've made all this money and you're just looking to move from one shop to the other. Or you're fresh out of college, you have the right degrees, and you're going to program and create algorithms and stuff like that. That's it. So that was the only opportunity, one of two, like Global Prime and, and Great Point that I was even able to find that would let you come in with, because uh, I didn't have that much With a sociology like, degree. and Exactly, right. <laughs> right. So, so in, in, in a mo- in a meager history of trading. So right, it's like, right, right, right. right. So, um, I mean, they, they didn't count the future stuff. I mean, that was different. But um so at the same time, when I was coming into this, like I, I was like, all right, well, it's it's a shot. I, I have nothing else to lose. But um, when I looked at the actual terms of the contract, basically you had to build up a $30,000 cushion before you could take any money out. So once you got to more substantial capital, you literally had to build up 30 grand in profits that would sit there. And then after that, then you can start taking money out, right? So that was basically their cushion. So if you start losing money after you got more funding, they wouldn't lose so much. Did did they make you close positions out daily or were you able to carry them over? You could carry overnights, but they had to be, but your your margin got clipped to like one fourth, right? So, So you really couldn't do much overnight. And I did a lot of overnight stuff at that time because the market just kept going up. So I'm like, well, what's the point of wasting the overnight opportunity <laughs> where it just kept going up? So I would put on like bigger name stocks like an Apple or a Microsoft and I would leave them on after I've gotten in. And the rest of the stuff was just day trading, um, just in and out. Uh, but it's, it's just, like I said, like building up was hard enough and it just took forever to build that up. Um, eventually, you know, you do it, but it took a long time and uh, with Global Prime, at least they would pay you out pretty much right away. They didn't require that, but it's just their structure was so awkward. Um, also, their software. That, yeah. Is that typical of, of most of the older prop firms? Is I don't, it tough to get your money out? or you That's know, what I've heard because, like I said, my experience literally started in 2014. Well, no, it was 2000, I think it was, yeah, 14, late 14. Um, so I don't know what it was like before. Cause I've talked to, you know, like, uh, Charlie Moon, I've talked to him about when, he, cause he was at great point, like 10 yep. years prior, I think his, he was 10 years prior to me or something like that, or eight years. So I think it was a different setup back then. Um, but I did notice a lot of people said the same thing. They're like, yeah, you get into a prop firm. If you didn't put any money up, then yeah, they're going to put like these serious restrictions on yeah. how long, like you, you got to vest this, you know, 18 months or whatever before you can take it out. That was my experience. I, I never traded prop. Um, yeah. I, I had my own, you know, options trading firm, but obviously I knew a lot of people in that business and in those traders that would go to work, um, correct me if I'm wrong, the upside is they didn't have to come in really with any capital, which was yes. good. So that barrier of entry was kind of gone. But right. the downside was, it always seemed like they were fighting to get their profits out. It always seemed yeah. like it was pulling teeth. And I know a lot of them just kind of moved on and, you know, went on to other things. Well, that's where I found myself. I mean, after a while, it just became like, man, you really have to fight and fight and fight for everything. Like you're, you're fighting like 
double for every inch like, that you make. And God forbid you take a loss, then then it's like you're back back to square one again. And um, you know, after a while, I just realized that that although it was a necessary step, it just wasn't going to be something I could do long term under those circumstances. If they were different, it would be better, but they just weren't. Um, I mean, these days most firms, if you get hired, um, you're a salary, and then you get a bonus based on your you know end of year performance. Um, which I don't think is a bad, I don't think that's a bad deal. In fact, I honestly wish like thinking about it now, I wish I could have done it that way because it would have been a lot less stress <laughs> because I mean, at the time I, um, you know, I, I walked out of the one side of the business where I was actually making decent money. And when I did the transition, I didn't have anything to back me up because it's like, I needed the money to actually finance my way yeah. into the next role knowing that I probably wouldn't get paid out for six months to a year, you know, for what I'm doing with the the initial round of what I'm doing. And um, so basically I started delivering pizzas. <laughs> like I just did that. That's what I did to basically keep myself alive during that time. And, um, you know, I wish it would have been a lot easier if I didn't have to do like all these things at once, if I could just focus on that. But was the path that needed to be taken i really wanted it that badly so so you've obviously been very successful at that along the way fast forward now you, know, you right. started that in 14 here we are you know end of 2023 you've obviously been successful and successful to the point right. that you decided to help fund help right. found a book right. funder with an f everybody funder trading so right. Did you take all of the the um, all the things that you weren't happy with, all of the shortcomings right. that you personally dealt with, yep. um, and are you changing any of that around? So in the funder program, which is a prop firm funding people, right? You know how how are these people coming in that are getting funded? How are they not going to run into the same obstacles and some of the things that that turned you off? How how has that changed? Well, that's good. I'm glad you asked. Uh, so basically with Funder, the the, the the best way I can describe it is like we, um, I personally, like me and my group have funded traders before Funder, right? But it was always on a smaller scale because we just don't, you know, we, we can't put out as much capital um, for like many different people. But with Funder, the, the logic is we want people to be able to get in who just want to do it. Like they really want to do it. And that's like what I was looking for when I got into the business. And I did have fortunately like someone to help me get in. But I also have to admit, like it wasn't like they were hiring people every day there. Like you would get maybe four people a month to even get a shot at it. And of those four people, almost every time, most of them would fail. And even if they did get somewhere, it took forever to get to any significant money. Like I mean, you're starting at two grand and you got to go through all these hoops just to get the four grand and they get the eight grand. Yeah. So with Funder, what we did is different. We said, you know what? We're going to create a, a, a coaching program, which I had, where I basically distill all the things that I've learned building myself up and also being built up by other people, most more, you know, more importantly, and also helping other people along the way that I've helped to learn how to trade. So I know I've coached people prior to this to where they actually still trade professionally. So I know I've done that, but with Funder, this is just like a bigger program. We're able to bring in a lot more people because we have the infrastructure, we got the support staff, et cetera. So what people are doing is uh, they're they're checking out like the webinar where I go over how everything works, like what you need to do, what you can expect. But once a person passes, immediately they've got $100,000 of buying power. And I mean- 100 grand? Yeah, 100 grand. So I mean, that's- serious that's significant yeah you're not starting at two and right okay i mean most of these places are starting you at like 25 grand 50 grand and it's not that i mean i'm not going to criticize anyone who's giving you money to uh, trade, but at the same time 100 grand i mean you can yeah, do, you can actually you do something have a lot of that. flexibility with 100 grand right right, wow. right. so yeah. and, and and more importantly as i always explain to the guys to get funded they're so obsessed about making money right now and i'm like dude this is not a situation where you have to make a hundred percent to to get a hundred, you know, to double your money to trade with. I said you just trade well, and we give you more money. Like if if you're trading consistently, 
within a couple of months, you could be at 200 grand, 300 grand, 500 grand, right? Just because you're consistent. And you don't have to make grand slam home runs. As we always say, guys, like, you know, if you're making 2% a month, right? But you're consistently doing that 2%. Grind it out. Grind it out. Grind it right? out, right. We're more than happy to say, you know what? This person we can count on at the end of this quarter, they're probably going to be up. Let's give them more money. And we can always work to help you improve your edge. So that's what we do as well. Like we look at what people are doing and giving them, you know, constructive feedback, which is well, one that's, that's that to me what is what sounds yeah. like the differentiator and the game changer is that right. you're you're actually coaching these people and you're you right. know, someone someone that has lived through the struggles, the growth, the downfalls, right. the successes. You've right. got someone there that's actually kind of holding your hand, guiding you through it, as opposed to, all right, here's 10 grand, go trade it. Right. That's got to right. be a huge, huge difference. It's massive. It's massive. Because when I started at uh, Great Point, I mean, when I say it was a training program, like I'm, I'm laughing to myself because it really wasn't. It was just like you went through a week of like this very banal, like generic stuff, like, Here's what a chart is. Here's the bid ask, et cetera. Stuff you need to know, of course. But when it came to actually what you're going to do, they gave one strategy that I honestly could not understand for the life of me. And I remember asking all these questions, but I couldn't get it. And then someone told me as soon as I got on the floor, I'm not even joking, like a couple of days on the floor, this guy comes up to me, says, just so that you know, what they told you is not going to work. <laughs> <I was> <laughs> And I, I right. was, well, that just took a hit to my career. I, I thought he was kidding. <laughs> then I noticed none of them were doing it. And I was like, oh, crap, he's right. No one's doing what he's talking about. So I was like, oh, man, this is bad. So I, I was flustered. Fortunately, one of the guys, one of the senior guys there, his name was Ben. Um, he still trades there. He's one of the senior. Uh, he's I think he's like a VP or something now. But he walked over one day and he said, Hey, how are you doing? And I'm like, I'm not doing good. <laughs> it's like, I'm trying to figure this out, man. I don't know what I'm doing. And he said, all right, let me show you what to do. And it worked. Like what he showed me, I still to this day is my mantra. Like he said, find a stock that's in play, find the buyer, find the seller and get it. That's all he said. But he showed me what he meant by pointing out like stuff that he was actually doing himself and his approach to scanning. I still use his approach to analyzing a stock, I still use. So it's like, it works. And after I saw what he was doing, that's changed everything. So for Funder, that was one of the biggest things I wanted to actually have a room where someone's guiding you through the process as it happens. So I'm identifying stocks as they come up just the same way like Ben would say, hey, you see this stock, check this one yeah. out, right? And he'd even do that on a regular basis, just to like randomly in a week, he'd say, hey, Mike, look at this. I'm like, okay. You know, for, me, for me, I'm like um, doing it every morning. And um, that's one of the reasons why I think we're getting so many more people getting funded because, you know, it's not easy. But as I, as I tell everyone who joins the program, as long as you listen to what I'm telling you and do it, which is not that complicated and you let me guide you through the process, we've set this up in such a way where as long as you keep walking that path, eventually you're going to get funded. I mean, it's just a matter of time. So I was telling people, don't stress about like you passed this month, or you the first month, whatever. Don't stress about that. Just make sure you see your progress. And as you go through the progress, as you go through the steps that I give you, eventually you're going to get funded. I said, but once you're funded, now you know you don't have to perform at absolute you know, peak performance all the time. That's impossible. The challenge is just designed to force you to, to put your best foot forward, to really go through the effort, you know, hit the standards. And then it's just like any other test. Once you've done it, it's in the past. I mean, you've done it. Now you just move on and you trade. So um, we just made Plus, it more. Having, ha having, you know, a professor there with you, literally right. that is advocating for you and wants you to pass right. wants you, you know, to get funded, having that guidance, you know, on a daily basis. I, I don't know how you put a price tag on that, but I bet a right. lot of people back, you know, when you started and over the last 10, 15, 20 years, sure wish that they they had that person there to to guide them through that. Um right. so what I, I know also with my limited knowledge of, of prop firms, some or actually most, if you're on the equity side, you can only trade stocks. 
not options. There are some futures. With Funder, what what can you trade? So for Funder, uh, we are the first and only firm to offer options funding. Like we literally are the first. Now, I'm not saying there's no prop firms out there you can trade options at, but if you go there, you're going to have to put up your own capital or you're going to have to get licensed one or the other, right? So with us, you don't have to put up your capital and you don't have to be licensed. Um, so we do allow options trading, which is fantastic because a lot of people want to trade options. Um, now, it is straightforward options. We're just doing calls and puts. So kind of like uh, Mike Schur, I saw uh, the podcast, you Mike Schur. Basically, the way that he day trades options is basically the type of day trading we're talking about. Uh, a lot of his guys actually have been uh, very successful in the program, uh, as a side note. So, so kudos to Mike. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, right, <laughs> right. So, um, but um, yeah, it's it's just straightforward uh, intraday trading of options. Um, definitely something that I wish that I could have done. A great point. They didn't let you do options at all, and I still I, I remember saying that like, oh, if I could just do options, I would do so much better at the time. Yeah, uh, just because I just didn't understand stocks as much at the time. Um, so we do both. Uh, you can, you know, calls and puts or if you're doing stocks long and short. Um, so it's fantastic. I mean, honestly, it, it's it's one of the I mean, it, OK, I'm, I'm biased. It is the best opportunity in my opinion. <laughs> I mean, for the average person, I would say, yeah, you want to go this route because I mean, in my mind, and this is the way I've explained it to everyone in the in the room. I'm like, look, I, I've been through this ringer. I've really been through the whole thing from from know nothing to be yep. something. And if I could have went back in time and, and had a program like this available when I first started, I would have signed up in a heartbeat. There would have been not a single question in my mind. That that's the way to go. Because, I mean, I took a lot of financial hits doing this stuff. I mean, I, I'm not going to get into all the details, but man. I mean, I spent a lot of money getting to where I am. So, um, well, that I, probably is one of the reasons why you're successful now, and why, um, you know, the program is successful because again, you're you're not someone that is book learned and okay, this is how you have to do it to be successful. You've lived it. You've taken the bruises. Right. You, you, you've right. lived it. You can you can guide people on you know some of the pitfalls to to stay away from. Right. So that's. Um, that that's really cool. Where where can people find you? Okay, so uh fundertrading.com is our website, and that's funder F U N D E R trading as in trading the markets.com. Um go there. There you can obviously just uh submit your information. One of our guys can reach out to you. Um also you'll probably see like if once you get on our our, our email um you know for our newsletter, you'll get invited to one of our webinars. I'll be there live going over how everything works, uh, you know, getting everyone you know, prepared for their journey. Um, and then once you're in the program, I mean, it will be me. You'll, we'll be talking, we'll That's be awesome. dialoguing, you know, real in real time. And um, like I said, if you just follow the program, follow the steps, that's what gets you funded. And um, even after you are funded, you know, I'm always there. I take calls all the time from guys, you know, they're trying to get back on track or they're, they're in a slump or maybe, I see that they're doing good. I'm like, hey, all right, do more of that. Do more of this. But, you know, just making sure that everyone is reaching their potential and making sure that everyone knows what, you know, what resources are out there. There's just so much that we do. Um, yeah. And I just, I, I, I can't, I, when I say in the webinar, I, I never feel like I communicate enough. Like I so desperately wish this was available when I started. Yeah. It would have made things so much easier, but it's just, it wasn't, you know, at the time. Well, People, people are fortunate to have you uh, guiding them along. All right, one more question for you. Sure. If there's one person that you'd recommend that we talk to on this podcast, who would it be and why? Oh, I, how many? Okay, so I know you talked to Mike Sure. Have you talked to Charlie yet? Yep. Okay, I haven't seen Charlie yet. Um, uh, hmm. Anyone? Okay. You know what I would really... On the hot seat. I know. I was thinking, like, I have a few people in mind, but I'm trying to pick one. Um, the person I would love to – actually, myself, this is just me being a little um, – Charlie Lewis. Okay. Charlie Lewis. Be, because he's just of a, he's his just, plethora of knowledge and experience in this business. Charlie is the most interesting man alive. <laughs> like, he just – you know what? Yes. Now that I think about that, he could probably be in those commercials. He could. <laughs> he, 
I mean, every time he talks, I was like, man, like how that what a life. Like what a life. So yeah, I, I just I used Lights. to sit right next to him at Prosper. Um yep. so yeah, we used to talk all the time. Like I would love to hear more of his background. Like I just I've never really gotten to long cover, but he you know, you can talk to Charlie for hours and you only get like that much of the whole story because <laughs> there's so much to tell. So yeah, I would awesome. love that. So you if you will, could, uh, I would I would love to listen to that. We're gonna reach out to him and put him on the docket. All right, awesome. Michael Patton, love it, man. Uh, I've known you for a really long time. I know how successful you are both as a trader and as that guide, as that educator. So I think, uh, you know, any, anybody that's going to be in this program that has you as their mentor is very lucky to have that. So thank, and we are very lucky to have you on here today. So thank you so much, man. Really appreciate it. Keep doing that good work. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Mike.